Shortly thereafter, two police officers come to her home, not to protect her, but to kill her. I kept trying, kept failing, game plan, kept changing, dreams fading, started hesitating, couldn't deal with the agitation, it only led to... It is July 6, 2024, location, Springfield, Illinois, where a young lady by the name of Sonia Massey calls 911 because she feels that someone's walking inside her home or outside her home. Shortly thereafter, two police officers come to her home, not to protect her, but to kill her. Let's take a quick look at the life of crime, Sean Grayson. Sean Grayson faced intense scrutiny about his actions as a deputy at another sheriff's department. NBC5 investigates has learned Grayson was under investigation for allegedly violating several departmental policies when he resigned from the Logan County Sheriff's Office and then took a job at the Sangamon County Office. Bennett Haberly investigates. John Grayson now faces murder charges for the shooting death of Sonia Massey. While her death is the latest incident in his law enforcement career to come under scrutiny, it wasn't the first. 100, she just took off on me. Newly released dash cam video shows this 2022 pursuit in Lincoln, Illinois. Then Logan County Sheriff's Deputy Sean Grayson is behind the wheel, chasing what he reports to be a woman in a truck he found to be suspicious. When his supervising officer tells him to end the pursuit, Grayson turns off his lights and sirens. But he does not stop. If she doesn't stop when I get behind her, I'm going to go ahead and turn her His pursuit ends abruptly when he strikes a deer. <laughs> the police report notes his speed at one point reached 110 miles per hour. In audio files obtained by NBC5 Investigates through a Freedom of Information Act request, the chief deputy in Logan County criticizes Grayson, pointing out inaccuracies in his reports and warns him that other officers have been criminally charged for submitting false or inaccurate reports. Sean, when I give you a direct order to check your reports, and I explain to you how easy it is to become an empty holster, if I allowed this report to go over, and you pushed wanting to get a warrant, and you get the warrant, and we had this discussion before, did we not? Yes. Just me asking you those questions. You got a report writing violation for policy. You got an accuracy violation for policy. You got a standard of conduct violation for policy and we're 48 seconds into this. During the interview, Chief Deputy Nate Miller calls out Grayson for a variety of policy violations and recommends he get more training, including taking high stress decision making classes. Seven months on, how are you still employed by us? I don't know. During that same interview, Grayson admits his report about the suspicious woman was wrong, that he was on a different street than what was noted in his report. We can't trust what you say and what you see. We can't have you in our uniform. Before that internal investigation is completed, Grayson resigns in April of 2023 and takes a job with the Sangamon County Sheriff's Office. Before being terminated for Massey's killing, it would be the sixth police department he worked for in the past four years. We found more records that raised questions about his hirings. In his job application to Logan County, Grayson admits to pleading guilty to two DUI arrests. So let's break it down into pieces. What breaks my heart about this young lady is when the officers came to her home, she said, I love you guys. Please keep in mind that a day before, a family member called because she was having like a mental breakdown or a mental imbalance. And they told her, please, she has mental health issues, take it easy. Uh, go, go with the proper etiquette, pretty much. So, this video was disturbing, it made me nauseous. It's tragic. But it's plain to see that you could see a bully with a badge. 
He goes with evil intent inside the home. Why I say that? It's because he had his body cam off. Had his partner had his body cam off, guess what? They would have came up with whatever story. The deputy, the, the, the deputy goes in, back and gives his story and gives false statements. Let's go through the video. They come to the home. The lady said, oh my God, I love you guys. They go inside the home. She's looking for her ID, the access for her ID. She has a bo boiling pot on the stove. She goes for the boiling pot, put her hands on it, take her hands off of it. Please keep in mind, the officer is about 30 feet away from her. She wasn't a threat. I, I, I didn't see nothing in the video or anything that looked like a firearm. The cop later then says something to the fact of, she says, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And he goes, huh? And then she goes again, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus again. And that's when a person with an evil heart activates. When I say activate, it is that a person with an evil heart, demons are easily attracted to that type of heart. And when she said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus the second time, she didn't say, shoot me in the name of Jesus. And he said, I will shoot you in your effing face. Don't move or whatever the case may be. Long story short is that he shoots this young lady. He fired three times. This was a cold-blooded execution. One bullet went in through her eyes, came out from the back, towards the back of her neck. When I read reports, I read, I read something that said that the one lady said, while she was on the, on the ground, before she was shot, she said, I'm sorry. That just makes my hair stand up because just, I'm just wondering what she's thinking at this point. And uh, the video is just horrific. Back to the story, the partner says he was going back to getting some medical stuff in the patrol car. And when he comes back, she's gasping and taking her last breaths. And he then later says, I'm going to go get my medical stuff. And then he was like, oh, no, we ain't going to need it. Very nonchalant. This is a cold-blooded murder, murderer, y'all. I know there's training that these guys go through, that these police officers go through. To prevent something like this. I know they go through all these kinds of scenarios. But this officer, he was unable to control himself. And when they speak to his boss, the chief deputy, he said, he just snapped. The question I have is, how many more officers are gonna snap here in America? You have to remember, we are tax paying citizens. We fund the police department. I repeat, we fund the police department, but to protect us, not to kill us. I have no words for this guy. I believe he had evil in his heart. I believe that the police department should and this is a battle cry to all the police departments. If you got a guy with this type of history, you must assess this person. Or if, if there's a red flag, 
you must put them through some type of psychological test so that we can catch these guys early. There's a lot of Sean Graysons here in America right now. And the sad part is that it's always somebody getting killed by a police officer. That somebody is never a threat to that one police officer to pull out the, a, a lethal firearm to kill somebody in that manner. Rest in peace to that young lady. I pray for her family, for her loved ones in these trying times. But it's almost embarrassing that a person we trust, instead of coming to protect, he came to kill. This guy, Sean Grayson, is a monster. He has no etiquette. He had no professionalism. If it wasn't for his partner's cam being on, they'll be singing a whole different story in that precinct. And another thing, there's only been, there's been three shootings in 30 years in that police department. But Mr. Grayson, according to his chief, his superior, he snapped. In this channel, I always speak about that there's a thin line between sanity and insanity. And it happens. But we train certain individuals to, to walk around with the power of walking around with a firearm to protect the citizens of the United States of America, not to kill. In this case, this is a very sad story. And again, it's a battle cry for these police departments to find the red flag on the next Sean Grayson. That's what I have for you guys today. I'm very distraught. Uh, I had to watch the video in pieces because it was heartbreaking, especially a young lady with mental health. This guy was a tyrant. He was a dirty cop. We got to get these guys off the street. Thank you for watching. Go in peace, y'all. I kept trying, kept failing, game plan, kept changing, dreams fading, started hesitating, couldn't deal with the agitation, it only led to the aggravation of not having nothing. The one who had some things was stunting and bluffing, had to create my own path, my own luck, found my